In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In today's Gospel, we come across a question that St. Peter posed to our Lord. Before addressing the question of St. Peter and its significance, let us note that asking our Lord questions, and not rhetorical questions, asking our Lord questions and conversing with him is a sign of a healthy and vibrant life of prayer. What happens when we don't ask our Lord questions, when we don't truly converse with him? Our prayer life becomes like this. It's as if we're going to call God, believing, though, that he's not going to answer. And then our prayer is simply as if we're leaving a voicemail. Lord, I know you're really busy right now. I know you might never hear this message, but just in case you do, blah, blah, blah. Then we hang up and we practically place our hands over our ears. We're not expecting a response. We don't await a response from the living God. Now the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that both sacred scripture and the lives and writings of the saints are sources for our prayer life. Our contact with sacred scripture with the lives and writings of the saints is so important because we learn how to pray. Now let us turn to St. Peter's question. St. Peter turned to our Lord and said, Behold, we have left all things and have followed thee. What therefore shall we have? Our Lord lovingly and willingly answers this question. Our Lord understands the human heart, both as our Creator, but also on account of His most sacred heart. Our Lord understands how important it is for us as priests, as men, to have a sense of direction, a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning, to understand where it is that I'm going. What's the meaning of all the sacrifices? Let us acknowledge that if we have lost our sense of direction, or in those times in the past when we didn't have a sense of direction, when we don't see the connection between our daily life and God's kingdom, that our priesthood lacks the love, the zeal for souls, that zeal for souls, which is a fire that both keeps us warm and keeps us pure. Our Lord's answer to St. Peter is confirmed in a wondrous way in the life and passing of St. Benedict. For today, March 21st, is the Solemnity of St. Benedict. It's the most important feast for Benedictines. It's the day that our Holy Father Benedict passed from this life to his eternal reward. Our Lord's answer, he tells Peter that all that have left everything to follow him shall receive a hundredfold and shall possess life everlasting. Now this is confirmed in the passing of Saint Benedict in a wondrous way. Our Lord revealed to some of Benedict's monks the path that Saint Benedict followed throughout his life the monks saw this beautiful and ornate path that from the earth gradually arose to God's kingdom, gradually arose to heaven. And at the end of the ascent, St. Benedict's monks saw Benedict in a loving embrace with God's Son, our Lord and Savior. Let us now turn briefly to the rule and to the life of St. Benedict to discover how he found this beautiful path so that we may as well. A teaching from the rule of St. Benedict. In the prologue of his rule, Benedict teaches us, 
that before we begin any task, we are to turn to the Lord and we're to ask the Lord to bless and bring to completion that which we're about to do. Now this holy habit, no pun intended, is a way of having a vigilant heart, a heart always turning towards, always lifting up its eyes to the Lord. And by this prayer, by this habit of never beginning a task without first asking the Lord to bless it and to bring it to completion, we discover that on a daily basis, we are cooperating with the Lord in all that we do. And does this ever awaken our faith to recognize the hand and the presence of the Lord in all that we do? Now a moment from the life of St. Benedict. The Lord God raised two people from the dead through the intercession of St. Benedict. One in particular, a poor farmer, had lost his son, that is, his young child had passed away. This poor farmer picked up the lifeless body of his son and he went to the monastery of St. Benedict in Monte Cassino and he began to ask for our Holy Father Benedict. It was explained to him that Benedict was in the fields working with the monks. The poor farmer set his lifeless child's body in front of the door of the monastery and then went out in search of Benedict. When he encountered St. Benedict, he began to yell, Give me back my son. Give me back my son. At first, Benedict didn't know what he was talking about. But then he realized that this man's son had died and that he was being asked to raise that child back to life. St. Benedict refused at first saying that only the apostles have worked such great miracles. But his monks encouraged him, and so St. Benedict, with tears, with his arms extended, said this prayer, Lord, look not on my sins, but on the faith of this man. We recognize this very same prayer in the Holy Mass right after the Our Father, Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. St. Benedict then prayed and wept, and through him the Lord God raised back to life that child who had died. Now for our priesthood to be holy, for our priesthood to have that zeal for souls, we're not supposed to wait till we have no more sin. Let us recall the miracle that Benedict just worked. Benedict first acknowledges that he is a sinner, that he has sins. But he says, Lord, look not on my sins, but on the faith of this man. If we wait until we're without sin, if we wait until we're holy for our priesthood to have that zeal for souls, we're going to miss the boat. Jesus, through us, wants to work mighty deeds on behalf of his people, as poor, as sinful, and as weak as we are. So through the intercession of our Holy Father, Saint Benedict, through his teaching and through his life, may we all discover that beautiful path so that day after day, step after step, we might be aware of the meaning, the purpose, the direction of our life as we step one step closer to that loving and eternal embrace with the very life and love of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.